The Cincinnati Zoo is known for a lot of things, but over the last decade, our growing reputation is in sustainability and as the greenest zoo in America. And it's taken a whole team to do it, but it's led by Mark Fisher, UC graduate, civil engineer, huh? Yeah, go Bearcats. And with some recent press on our African Painted Dog exhibit, it's off the grid, and we met a thing called the Living Building Challenge, which yes. sounds almost impossible. Yes. But tell a bit of what went into it. Well, so when they say Living Building Challenge, they mean challenge, because it's extremely difficult. Uh, as you know, we're very serious about green building here. Yeah. We've been in the lead rating system for a long time, but Living Building Challenge kind of takes that to a whole another level where it's not just giving you a grading on a curve relative to a benchmark. Living Building Challenge says net zero energy, yes or no. Net zero water, yes or no. So it's extremely aggressive, uh, unapologetic, and it's uh, a first endeavor for us. And we got the certification, as you know, a few weeks ago, and it's something we're very proud of. So here's the tricky part. When a visitor comes, there's a lot of water. Yeah. And obviously there's water in the back yeah, for the yeah. animals. And it takes some energy to run all this. And there's obviously light bulbs. Sure. And so how does that end up working that way? So there were, there's a couple of key components to this that a visitor can see. So energy, big deal. Net zero energy. How did you do that? Because you have all these things going. Um, first of all, um, the lights and the pumps and things we did put in here, extremely efficient, as efficient as you can get. Um, the other part is we use geothermal technology, so geothermal heat pumps that use the constant temperature of the earth to help heat and cool. So that drove our energy bills in half, right, right there, our usage. And then what's left over, um, we made up with solar PV. So we have the huge array in the parking lot, which took about 25% of the building off mm -hmm. the grid. And the rest we augmented with about a 40 kilowatt array that's on top of that building over there. That got us to net zero. Uh, the other interesting part on this water is this is a significant water feature. We are standing on top of a 400,000 gallon cistern, literally right here. That was a partnership with our sewer district mm -hmm. uh, to collect storm water and keep it out of the sewers and keep it here at the zoo. And that's what you're looking at right here. What's remarkable about it is it's this perfect connection of it's great for the animals that bred in here. It's very active. It's great for visitors. It's a killer exhibit and a lot yeah. of fun. And really shows our mission of trying to do the right thing and show people that it's possible to do some great stuff, yeah. but do it smarter. Yeah, so not only, as you know, I mean, the, where you want to start with conservation is in your backyard, right here. That's the first and most important step, and that's what we're doing here big time. Um, and it's, it's practical. It works. This isn't like some voodoo magic. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is engineering and architecture and design and just making smart decisions. Uh, and, of course, the beauty of all this, too, is... For the lifetime of this project, the utility bills for this project will always be zero, forever. Okay. So there's a smart upfront investment to save us in the money long, save us money in the long term. That's just what we do here. Well, the great thing you've been proving at the zoo over the last 10 or 11 years is that it's a myth when you hear people say, "Well, I'd like to do a better system, a more efficient system, lead certification, but it's too expensive." Right. Well, if you look at your water bill, for instance. If we used as much water as we did when you started in 2006, the zoo would be broke. That's how Correct. expensive water is. So. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of organizations, utilities is our number two cost here. It used to make up 10% of our budget. 10%. That number today is 5%. There you go. And so when you're talking about seeing explosive growth, controlling long-term costs, and this is about, when I say sustainability, it's about financial sustainability. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford to grow the zoo like we have and just kind of keep the same status quo way we design and build our building. We can't afford that. Right? So this idea that you can't afford it is a myth, and when people say that, it's because they don't understand the data and the math on that, right? So your zoo is an 80-acre example of we have to do these things. This is an 80-acre example of this stuff makes stuff. This stuff makes sense, and we can't afford to not do it. The neat thing about it is on a big scale with, say, a huge campus, say UC or Xavier, they can do it at a pretty big scale, but really at people's homes very doable. We lead in, sure. live in a house that my wife worked real hard and got lead certified as we redid it and put in geothermal and some other things and it's, it's terrific. You can do it right at your own house and it makes sense. Yeah. The question you had about efficient equipment like light bulbs uh, you know you think oh well how much energy does a light bulb use? Well in a place like the zoo we have thousands of light bulbs so it actually makes a difference. Right. I would say if you look at the energy intensity here at the zoo which is basically how much energy we use relative to how many buildings we have it's down almost half in the last decade, and that's the, it's light bulbs. It's a big deal, and fans and pumps, and which is no different at our zoo than another zoo or at University of Cincinnati or at your house. 
It's about looking at all those little components and saying, how do we do that better? Yeah. That thing better. And making little decisions every day to be great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thanks for everything you and your team are doing. And next time you come to the zoo, be sure to check out the African painted dogs. They're energy efficient and a lot of fun. Oh, <laughs>